Hey everybody, welcome to my talk about BAP. Um, I think I'll be pretty short on time, so please ask questions on Twitter, use these hashtags if you have any questions. I am Zoran Saric, I study computer science at TU Darmstadt and I'm involved in BAP since April of 2010. Um, I'll first give a little motivation on what to do with backup, what our goals with backup are, then I'll go to detail on Git's file structure, and then I'll show you what BUP is. Okay, backups. Yeah, sure, we want to do backups, and we want to have our data, and it shouldn't be corrupted. And yeah, um, we want to have space-efficient backups. So we don't, have, don't want to have complete copies, full copies of every backup we do. This would fill up our hard drives pretty soon. So space, space efficiency. Um, second is we want to have convenient access to our backups. It doesn't help if we have 10 years of backups in one tar file and have to download 200 gigs to get two files back. Um, third, we want to be safe against bit rot, against um, those uh, small changes on, on disks that break our files. That isn't too good. We want to be safe against that. Um, and we want to be sure that nobody can change the history of our backups. So if somebody infiltrates our system and they change anything in, in our backups, we want to know that they did this. Who, have know, who of you knows Git? <laughs> Great. <laughs> who, of you, who of you knows the internals of Git? Okay, fine. Um, this shouldn't be news to you. Git is a distributed version control system. Is anybody here that needs an, ex that needs an explanation on this? Okay, cool. Um, it is content addressed. You, you, in Git, you have these SHA-1 hashes, and everything is addressed by a SHA-1. Every content, every commit, everything. Every object, every commit, and I'll go into detail on this, is immutable. You, back, uh, you save something to Git, and it is never changed. And Git is snapshot-based, not like subversion, diff-based. It is snapshot-based, and this makes it pretty fast. Okay, let's take a look at a Git repository, or better, its objects. First, we have blobs. Blobs are really content. No, no files, like any, any file that can, contains Hello World and has a file name, but only the content, hello world. Second objects are trees. Trees are kind of like file system directories. They have references to blobs and other trees. So with trees, you can build trees. Yo, dog. <laughs> um, third are commits. Um, yeah, you probably know what a commit is. Um, commits are snapshots of the state of a repository at some point in time. They first have, always have a reference to a tree, and they might have a reference to a parent, unless they are the most recent commit. And fourth, we have tags and branches. Um, tags and branches are references to commits, and they are just plain text files. So by default, you have a master branch, and this master branch is a file in your Git repository, in your Git directory, and it contains a SHA-1, in ASCII, you can retrieve a commit with this. This is how a Git repository looks like, the, the tree of a Git repository. First, we have master, the branch, which has, which has a reference to some commit. This commit has reference to a tree and to its parent. And the tree has commits, uh, had, has references, sorry, to blobs. And you see, because we are content addressed, and we have immutable objects, we can reuse objects. So this might be the readme of some project, and it didn't change. So both, both trees, both commits, use the same blob. This is pretty neat. This brings deduplication on the file level, which is nice for a backup. Last objects are pack files. If you do a commit in your Git repository, every object is written to .git objects, and they are loose objects, they are single files, which is nice 
for the start, but um, once you have a lot of them, it gets really expensive to retrieve them because you have, look, you have to look up every inode and this is expensive. So we have pack files. Pack files are just objects written one after another in one big file. They are up to two gigs and you can do a sequential read if you retrieve more than one blob or more than one object at a time and this is pretty fast. Um, indeed, this is faster than a copy on the file system. Okay, sounds pretty great. Why don't we do backups with Git? Just plain Git. And I guess some of you might have had that idea. Hey, Git is great and it does deduplication and it is all small and I'll use it. And here I have this 200 gig SQL dump and I throw it at Git and damn it, it's slow. Um, when writing pack files, Git throws both versions of a file through X delta. And if you know X delta, you know that X delta has the assumption that both versions fit into memory. And this is fine for most source code, and this might, bu might be fine for JPEG files, but if you have, like I said, a 200 gig SQL dump or some VMware image or anything, it gets pretty slow and memory hungry. Second, Git doesn't store metadata. Okay, it stores the executable, executable flag and um, it stores symlinks, but nothing else. No permissions, no owners, no groups, no ACLs, nothing. That brings us to BUP. Yay. Um, <laughs> BUP is a software that uses the Git file format. It is uh, developed by Every Penroon, um, which also developed uh, Git subtree, S Shuttle, Redo. Um, that's the URL of the project. Um, every, everything development regarding is done over the mailing list. We have no bug tracker. Um, we don't do push re uh, pull requests on the GitHub. Patches are sent to the mailing list. Yeah, that's the heart of the project. At the moment, Bob isn't production ready yet, I'd say. Um, there's a Debian package, but you know, Debian packages are pretty old. Um, and you want to be pretty bleeding edge with BUP. So you better clone the repository and make it no configure step required. Um, yeah, and of course we have some dependencies. Let's take a look how BUP is used. Um, currently, a backup step, uh, backup action is done with two steps. First, an index step. Um, the index app um, traverses the file system, takes a look at every file, and writes it, to, writes it to an index, and you can tell if you need to back it up, or if you know it already, if you have, have backed it up already. Um, and the save step traverses this index. This has um, the, the advantage that we have a progress bar that is reliable not like a Windows progress bar, if you know the XK XKCD. Yeah, the, the save step um, traverses the index, writes all needed stuff to, to the repository, and creates a commit. Third command is backing up to a server. This is done over SSH, so you can, you can do push-style backups to a remote machine. This is doing a backup of a server to your local machine. So you can do pull style backups too. With the on command, you can run commands on, on a remote server. You have to have bub installed there, of course. You have to have um, SSH configured. And then you do the index step, and you do, do, you, and you do your save step, and you have your backups locally. This is how you can take a look at your backup. This is my backup set, the name of the backup. This is a symlink to the latest backup, and this is my home directory. Okay, let's take a look at Bob's features. Deduplication. Can you also restore your backup? Yeah. <laughs> Funny fact. <laughs> um, the restore command is there since uh, 0.23, I think. Um, <laughs> There, there, was, there was ways to restore single files before, 
but uh, restoring a complete backup is pretty new. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> first feature is uh, deduplication. You know, uh, one of our motivations is to have space-efficient backups. Um, this is the link to a mailing list thread that discusses some benchmarks I did. Somebody came to the, to the mailing list and said, mm, OK, I use our snapshot. Why should I use Bub? No. Yeah. Then I sat down and made a benchmark. I started to Amazon EC2 machines with Debian, put some random data there and changed a bit in it on both machines, did my backups, and um, you can read it on the, on the thread. Um, our snapshot had 4.97 gigs, but 2.18. I also did an import of my R snapshot backup. At, at the moment, I use our snapshot for my production backups. And yeah, my, my R snapshot backups are 12.6 gig, and Bob fits it into 4.6. We have metadata support, kind of almost done. <laughs> <laughs> um, in fact, we, we have a working patch set that is just about to be merged into master f since half of a year, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if you do something, we want to do it right, and we want to have it tested, and we want to be sure it works for 100% because it's backups, and you don't want to have your backup, backups messed up. So um, we don't only store owner and permissions, but we store exact times, as exact as the file system we're backing, off, backing up of, um, gives us the timestamps, permissions, extended ACLs, and SE links attributes. Nice feature is a fuse module. Um, you can mount your backup with a fuse module and can browse it with your file manager. You can restore files from your file manager, just copy them out. Or you can also, um, I think, here are some sysadmins too, um, and often you have somebody who says, oh no, I deleted that file and I need it back. And you can just say, okay, um, here's your backup, just mount this Samba share and get it yourself. Nice feature too is a web interface. Um, you can browse your backups with a nice web interface with your browser and also retrieve files from there. It runs on DDWRT. So, yeah, you can... <laughs> In fact, I thought about leaving that slide out. <laughs> um, yeah, you can run it on your, on your router, on your NAS, whatever. Um, pretty neat. We have an import script for our snapshot. So if you're using our snapshot right now, and think about using Bob from tomorrow on, or from next year on, or whatever. There's a script for it, and it doesn't just save your R snapshot tree, but it also creates commits with the correct timestamps. Um, probably more will follow. I heard duplicity is pretty um, widely used too, so I think I'll write a duplicity importer. We are fully, fully compatible with Git. You can use the Git binaries to access data in a BUB backup. You can look at your backups with git k, git x, tig, you name it. This, yeah, this is something that's pretty important to us too, because yeah, we might someday say, mm, OK, BUB isn't interesting to us. You can always fork it. It's LP, LGPL. Um, but you can always access your data with git too. And if you remember, um, one of our motivations is to be safe against bit rot and failing media. For this, we use PAR2. PAR2 creates uh, parity information, so you can um, restore files if some, some bits are broken. Yeah. OK, let's take a look how BUP does things, the algorithms and data structures. Um, we have hash splitting, MIDIX, and Bloom filters. Okay. What is hash splitting and how do we do deduplication? Um, 
I have to say, we don't do deduplication only on a file level, like Git does it. We go deeper and split files into chunks. So if you have a 200 gig SQL dump, and at one line in the middle, you don't have to copy, you don't have a full copy of that file, but only the changes. And this is done with hash splitting. We use a rolling checksum algorithm, um, the one that's used in rsync too. Um, who's familiar with rsync? Okay, um, rsync is a tool you can use to copy big files to some server or anywhere, and it only transfers the deltas. So if you have a 200 gig SQL dump and change one line and want to upload it again, you can use rsync. Um, we use this algorithm. Um, a rolling checksum is an algorithm that um, iterates over a file with a window and calculates some hash sum based on a window. And if this hash sum, this, this hash sum, hash sum is again only um, dependent of the content, not of some, win, of, of some fixed size window or anything. And if this hash sum has 11 ones in the least significant bits, we create a new chunk. Why 11? Don't ask us. <laughs> if, you, if, you have, if you have a better number, come to the mailing list and help us. Computer science to the rescue. So we, we have, at an average, eight kilobyte chunks um, and save big files in eight kilobyte chunks. So this is how we get deduplication. Um, we have, you, do you remember the pack files in Git? Every pack file is just objects written out one after another, and um, idx files are indices for these pack files. If you want to look up an object in a pack file, you need about three to four lookups per pack file. In a big backup set, you can have several pack files. And if you do backups, you want to check, do I know this blob or do I know this tree? Mm, okay, I have to iterate over all pack files. Mm, I didn't find it. Next pack file, mm, I didn't find it. Three to four lookups per pack file. If you divide, I don't know, 200 gigs by eight kilobytes, you know how many objects you get. And this is many lookups. We have MIDIX for this. MIDIX is an index for several pack files, and an object is found in about two lookups. The only problem is, if you add something to your repository, you have to rewrite the complete MIDIX file. And this, is, this, this takes some time, too. So we use Bloom filters. Who of you knows Bloom filters? Okay, um, Bloom filters are a probabilistic data structure. You can check if you have seen a datum before with a given probability. The probability is the probability for false positives. At first, this sounds weird. Why do you use something that has a false positive rate? Um, but they are pretty fast and you can append to them. And you can calculate how big your probability of a false positive is. And if we have a probability of bigger than 1%, we just recreate the Bloom filter. Um, a Bloom filter is a bit array. You know bit arrays? They are just arrays of bits. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you, 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 have a, you, have a, you have some uh, binary uh, uh, memory and you said bits in there and um, you want to use a hash function that is optimized to have uh, at least uh, to have least ones in the result as possible and um, the, the bloom filter this bit array is then um, used by using the existing bit array and adding the the new ones with or bitwise or um, yeah when a hit is found, we do a MIDIX lookup to be sure that we don't have a po false positive and we don't skip an uh, object that we need. Okay. Recently, um, 
we have, yeah, like I said, metadata support about to be finished. It's available. You can use it. It's publicly, publicly, publicly available. Sorry. Um, you can test it. If you're into Python, but is developed in Python, join us, write tests. Um, I recently wrote a repack patch set. Before this, it wasn't possible to get rid of old backups. <laughs> so you added your new backups, and you added your new backups, and there was no way to get rid of them. In fact, this isn't a trivial thing. You, you have to get all references to objects you need, and then rewrite all pack files. Um, we have identifies-based daemon discussed at the moment on the mailing list. Identify is a kernel module that um, notifies you if files are changed. And you can say, okay, I want to monitor my home directory, and every time something is changed, I want to have it backed up. This might result in a lot of commits, um, but your hourly or half hourly or whatever interval you choose, backups will be very, very fast then because nothing has to be saved and just a new commit is done and you can throw away the identify branch later and yeah. Don't ask what uh, Bob can do for you. <laughs> you know it? <laughs> yeah, it's Python. Um, performance critical parts like calculating the rolling checksum are implemented in C. We don't have a native Windows support port. Um, Bob runs in Sigwin, fine. I all, all, already backed up Windows systems with it. But yeah, if you're into Python and Windows, join us. Um, also, we don't have metadata support for OS X or Windows. Um, OS X has, I think it's called uh, FS event, which is something like iNotify. You could port the iNotify daemon to it. We, we are pretty short on um, end user interfaces. Um, like you saw in, in, the, in the examples, backing things up is an index step and a, and a safe step. This will probably get done with one command later. But we don't have GUI, we don't have nice diff. This is stuff that you can do if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty new. I didn't have time to look into it, but it, it looks pretty neat. Sorry? Uh, yeah, the, the question or interruption was, uh, there's a K sorry, sorry. <laughs> there, there's a KDE interface to BUP that's pretty new. Um, yeah, I didn't have time to look too deeply into it, but the screenshots look nice. <laughs> What's so funny about that? <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> this is how you can contact me, uh, spam me on Twitter or contact me on, on Freenode or Hackend. Um, yeah, I think we have some time for questions, if there's some. Yeah, very few minutes, like maybe two short questions or something. Um, I think we started with one from ISC. Like I said, if you have more questions, um, either grab me here, I'll be around for a moment, um, or use the hashtags bub and 28c3 on Twitter. Um, Salts and Ori on RC are asking, does bub work with special files? So can you backup slash the root uh, directory? Uh, you can backup your slash root directory, but um, devices aren't saved yet, so no, no special files now. Okay, there was a question over there. You can uh, backup dev u random though. <laughs> <laughs> Might take some time. Sorry. Um, does it work? Yeah. Uh, how is uh, the repack, uh, how is it implemented? Because I can, uh, can imagine that if you uh, remove dependent files from later commits, uh, later commits have, uh, may, have, uh, may depend on blobs that are very early introduced into the system. Yeah, um, what I do is I traverse the commit history, I traverse the whole tree, 
um, and keep references to objects that I've seen. Um, and then I go to my pack files and write every object that I've seen that I need to new pack files. Um, that's not trivial. It, if you have a big backup and you just save your SHA once to a list or anything, um, you probably will run out of memory. So I use bit arrays again. And um, so look. The Bloom filter step is repeated then. No, I, I don't. I don't do hashing. Um, for every pack file, I have a bit array, and I set the bits of objects that I need. Okay. So, okay, maybe one last question. Um, when when you uh, said you provide deduplication application on subfile level, um, yeah. how do you um, generate those object, objects? Because the Git objects are big chunks uh, of a whole file, and yeah. how do you split them and still be compatible with the Git format? Um, we, we split big files into trees and blobs again. So um, if, you, if you have some dump.sql um, in your backup, in your Git repository, there'll be a dump.sql.bub. And this is a tree that points to trees and, and blobs. So if you access um, big files with plain git, you'll get those chunks. But there's a one-liner on the mailing list that packs them together again. So if everything breaks, you'll get it back. OK, time's over. Thank you, Zoran.